Senate Republicans still can't agree on just a GOP package. Meanwhile, a federal ban on evictions ran out yesterday. Federal unemployment benefits run out on Friday and the first uh, the last checks have already gone out. And the payroll protection program for businesses is running out early next month. Won't millions of Americans and millions of businesses pay the price because the White House and Senate Republicans can't get your act together? Well, Chris, first let me say I think that's an unfair characterization. Uh, the administration and the Senate Republicans are completely on the same page. Mark Meadows and I were up yesterday just working on technical issues in the drafts. We had previously agreed on all these issues earlier in the week. We want to move forward quickly. Uh, the, the bill will be introduced Monday, and we're prepared to act quickly. This is all about kids and jobs. This is our focus, and we want to make sure something gets passed quickly so that we deal with the unemployment and all the other issues, paycheck protection plan, tax credits to rehire people, and money for schools. But, but Mr. Secretary, the plan was supposed to be announced uh, on Wednesday, then Thursday, now it's next week, and it's two months after the Democrats came up with their plan, and now you're going to have to start negotiating with Democrats now that you have a Republican plan. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Friday, hopefully we can come together behind some package we can agree on in the next few weeks. And here's White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. We're trying to make sure that we hit the immediate needs first and then continue to negotiate perhaps throughout most of, of August until we get something finished. So do you have a GOP plan that will be announced tomorrow? And, and then uh, what are laid off workers and what are struggling businesses supposed to do while you spend, as the White House chief of staff just said, uh, until sometime in August negotiating with Democrats? Well, let me first say we do have an entire plan. It's a trillion dollars. And let me just remind everybody that of the three trillion dollars we've already passed, we have about a trillion to a trillion and a half still left to put into the economy. So these are very, very large amounts of money. The, the plan that is just running out now provided a federal unemployment benefit on top of state unemployment benefits, a federal benefit of six hundred dollars a week. Uh, you're saying that's too much. How much do you plan to reduce it and why? Well, Chris, just remember when we did the last plan, and, and let me say, you know, when you talk about piecemeal, this will be the fifth set of legislation. So there's no reason why we can't have number five, six, and seven as we need to deal with issues. And obviously anything we, knew, we do, we need bipartisan support. But as it relates to unemployment insurance, we, we knew there was going to be large unemployment. We had a technical issue with the states and how they were going to be able to do this. So we picked a, a number that on the average looked OK. But what we've seen is now that we want to have the technical correction and we want to have something which pays people about 70 percent wage replacement, which I think is a very fair level. So it's not a fixed number. It's something that pays you a percentage of your wages that are lost. And, and let me just say, last time people thought we'd have 40 or 50 million people unemployed. The, the, the good news is we never got anything like that. And matter of fact, we've created and brought back an enormous number of jobs. So all these different pieces have to work together, where it's the Paycheck Protection Program, or whether it's the direct payments we send, or whether it's the money to schools. All this works together. So UI is just a component of the overall economic package, which everybody wants the same thing, which is let's get kids back to school where it's safe and let's get workers back to their jobs. When I did my interview with President Trump last week, he said that he might veto a bill that did not include a payroll tax cut. Uh, that now is gone from all the discussions. Why did the administration cave on that so quickly? Well, in, in our conversations with Pelosi and Schumer, it was very clear that the Democrats were not going to give us a payroll tax cut. 
So that's something the president will come back and look at later in the year. But, um, but the, the money but goes sir, in, in fair, over. If, 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 I may, if I may, just briefly, it wasn't just Democrats. There were a number of Republicans who rejected this. Uh, I want to put them up on the screen. Some of the top Republican leaders in the Senate, John Thune, John Cornyn, Chuck Grassley, they had a son at finance. They all said they had no interest in that. And well, so you got you got blowback, not just from Democrats, but from some top Republicans as well. There were other Republicans that supported it. And, and let me just say, again, we know we need bipartisan support. We have tax credits that we've put in here to incentivize people to get back to work and, and small businesses to hire people. We have the direct payments. And as you know, the direct payments are a much quicker way of effectively giving everybody a tax cut. And it's much quicker than the payroll tax cut. Meanwhile, 32, you say we don't have 40 million unemployed. We do have 32 million people unemployed and more people applied for jobless benefits last week, uh, 1.4 million than it applied the week before. So new unemployment was go is going up, not, not down. Meanwhile, we're seeing this surge uh, in the virus and more and more states are either delaying or actually rolling back. Uh, some of their reopenings, isn't this going to have a, a, an effect on the recovery? And is there a possibility of a double dip recession? Well, Chris, let me just point out, as you said, you know, we got to 30, we never got to 40 or 50. That's a huge difference. And we created almost 10 million jobs since then. So we are in a very different situation. There are parts of the economy that are doing very well. Uh, there are parts of the economy that aren't. And there are places like New York and New Jersey, which were very big problems at the time, have recovered significantly. And there's other areas where there's an issue. So yes, we are, we are going to put more money in the economy. We want to support workers, small business, kids going back to school. And, and those are our priorities. Numbers will be released for the second quarter on Thursday. And the Atlanta Fed is projecting that the GDP number for the second quarter nationally will not be the, the plus one or two or three percent that we normally see, but instead for the second quarter will be something like minus 33 percent. One, is that what we should expect to see, a contraction of the economy by a third in the second quarter? And, and secondly, if it's anything like that, why would you want to cut back on the $600 stimulus payments, the unemployment benefits? Because there are projections that even if you cut it to around $200, which is basically what I think you're talking about with a 70, 75 uh, percent of, of wages, there are estimates that that's going to cost millions of jobs. Well, Chris, we always said the, the second quarter was going to be a very bad quarter. Again, that's not for economic reasons. That's for health reasons. We literally shut down the entire economy. And I think, as we've said, we expect the third quarter, uh, the consensus is 17 percent GDP. So we do think you're going to see a very big rebound. I might just also comment on June retail sales were 1 percent higher than June of last year. So all that money we pumped into the economy, it worked. People went out and spent. And on the, you know, as it relates to the unemployment insurance, again, I think workers and Americans understand the concept that you shouldn't be paid more to stay home than to work, that the fair thing is to replace wages. And it just wouldn't be fair to use taxpayer dollars to pay more people to sit home than they would get working and right. get a job.